We're seeing a lot of really cool Apple intelligence features today, but my question to you is, what is your most used Apple intelligence feature that you didn't think you'd be using as much as you currently are? The thing that I think is great about Apple intelligence and what I've found most useful is it's available to you kind of wherever you are, right? You don't have to go discover it or find it or, you know, go to a separate app, but it's kind of woven into all of your experiences. And that means for me as somebody who writes a lot and writes a lot of emails and things like that, the thing that I have just built into my workflow are, are writing tools. Because I'm not a grammar expert, but I want to make sure that what I'm sending makes sense to people. And I'm like probably you quickly dashing thoughts down. And the writing tools just allows me to be able to quickly check and make sure that what I've written makes sense, maybe occasionally change the tone, uh, do those kinds of things. And so I'm sure it'll be different for many other, for everybody else. They'll find their own mixture of these uh, features and capabilities. And that's what I think is so exciting about Apple intelligence. It's really cool that you mentioned that everything's just available to you from the get-go. And I think for me specifically, I love the ChatGPT integration with Siri. It adds a whole nother dimension to Siri that wasn't previously there. So just like how Siri will hand off specific user requests to ChatGPT, can we expect Apple intelligence to leverage even more third-party AI models to further enhance the Apple intelligence experience? The great thing is the architecture that we've built also allows us to then tap into and bring external models into that same experience, ChatGPT being the the first of them. And what's really important about those is that they're integrated in the same way we're just talking about writing tools and other things. They're integrated into the experience so you don't actually have to go leave writing tools, you don't have to go leave Siri to be able to take advantage of, um, of ChatGPT. And over time, I think we'll see, and we've talked already about adding additional models where, where there is specific knowledge that might make sense or whether there are complementary uh, capabilities that we want to, to integrate in. But as you point out, what is core to those experiences is that we want to be able to maintain and be transparent about the privacy promise that we're offering, as well as the privacy promise that's being extended by a partner like OpenAI and ChatGPT. Yeah, and going off privacy, other companies try their absolute hardest to gather, store, and use as much user data as possible, whether it be like requests, results, markers, and unique identifiers, with the intention of further developing their AI models using those very valuable data sets. So I guess what I'm asking is private cloud compute doesn't store any requests beyond the time it takes to actually fulfill the user requests that they send from their Apple device. Is Apple at any competitive disadvantage by not actually storing and directly utilizing this very valuable user information beyond the time it takes to do the request? And if not, why is that? So first and foremost, if we back up, you know, one of the core values of Apple is we believe privacy is a fundamental human right. Especially in the case of of AI, one of the things we know is many users and customers are absolutely and legitimately concerned about their privacy and how are my data going to be used. And so that's why we spend so much time talking about the privacy structure of Apple intelligence and the way in which we have built the models and the way in which we train the models and and the fact that we will never use our users' data um, to train our foundation models. That being said, though, in terms of training our models, we have taken a very specific and I think um, innovative approach. We have gone and uh, found and licensed data sets that we can bring into our models from third parties, whether it's image or, or other data, and we've taken publicly available information and built those into the, uh, into the models. But we've also gone and done some amazing things like Genmoji. Genmoji is trained by a data set that we created because we know the style of Genmoji. So we can go build that training set and be able to then go create Genmoji that look like the emoji that you would see in um, in iOS or, or, or Mac OS. I absolutely love Genmoji. It looks so native to the current style that's already in the yeah. iPhone. What's Very your favorite fun. Genmoji so far? Because you can enter people like from yeah. your actual photos yeah. and then it's fun to like send people uh, gen modes that look like them for yeah. like certain situations. It <laughs> yeah. throws them off, but it's so fun. Adds yeah. so much value to the conversations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. To that point, this is my first time in Australia, um, and everybody's asking me, so what are you seeing? Where are you going? And so, you know, fire fireworks over the Sydney Harbour is, yeah. you know, easy one to ship off and be like, oh, I know where, I know where you are. It's, exactly. You know, it's great that way. Amazing, yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you so much, Bob. Oh, no, thank you. It was a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. And thanks for coming in.